Um, so I'll also introduce our final speaker for this session, and that is Robert Kaufman. And he's got a, a talk entitled, A Relation Between Local Forcing and Temperature in an Urban Environment. Well, thanks, thanks, Jeff. And next slide, please. So what I want to talk, next slide. What I want to do is talk about whether there's a local effect of CO2 concentrations on climate. And that would really change things in terms of climate policy, because right now the assumption is if a town imposes a policy to reduce emissions, they do not capture the benefits in terms of climate, but if there is a relationship, they would capture the benefits and make any kind of climate policy much more attractive. Next. So what I wanna do is talk about an amazing data set that was put together by two students, Amy Argenter and Violet Balasare. Uh, Violet's on the, on the talk today or listening in. And it's uh, merged hourly data from three different stations. On the upper left is the station on the Mass Pike of counting cars that goes by. In red is, the st is a weather station that compiles all the usual weather observations, temperature, precipitation, pressure, et cetera. And on the right, the green station is one of Lucy's stations that measures CO2. Next slide. So what we wanna do is look at whether there's a relationship between temperature and CO2 on an hourly basis. The problem is there's a simultaneous relationship there as temperature changes, the uh, atmospheric concentration of CO2 changes due to heating and photosynthetic activity. And as CO2 changes, maybe there's an effect of temperature. So to cope with this, we need a two-stage instrumental variable approach in the first stage you want to find something that's related to CO2, but not temperature, in this case, car count. And we'll use that car count and other variables to predict CO2. And then we'll use those predicted values of CO2 in the second stage regression to actually estimate the effect on temperature. Next slide, please. And the results are actually very strong. So in the first stage, that car count variable is a very strong predictor of CO2. The F test is 525. The normal value for a strong instrument is 20. What's really critical here is the beta associated with radiative forcing that's positive and statistically significant, which indicates that radiative forcing of CO2 does indeed raise temperature. And the effect is seemingly reasonable. A 500 part per, a 50 part per million increase increases temperature about 0.1. And this summer, Violet will be expanding the use of this data set to look at how weather patterns affect the biotic uptake of CO2. So let me finish there. 